What's up everyone and welcome to my second video of the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. Why is he not playing the guitar? Huh? Who's playing this music right here? You might think that, oh, you know, Ola's just playing up uh, his song, you know, using uh, the reamp guitars and, uh, you know, or plugins or whatever through Logic. But that's not what you're hearing right now. You're listening to two guitars and a bass guitar being routed through the quad cortex. So what you're hearing right now is the quad cortex working in real time. Two rhythm guitars and a bass guitar. So in Logic, I have three DI tracks two rhythm guitars and a bass guitar, and that is routed out from my Apogee Ensemble interface. You can also do this in USB as well. I just wanted to show it like this with all these cables right here because it mimics more of if you would, you know, connect the guitar string into it or have a full setup of two guitar players and a bass player hooking up to the quad cortex. These DI signals are being routed into three separate inputs on the quad cortex and into its own signal path right here. So let me just demonstrate by Bypassing the amps. Overdrives. Oh. So now you're basically hearing the DI tracks. Actually, I have to bypass the cabinet as well to make this fully anal. So this is the DI input signals that goes through this thing. Then I engage overdrives. And in the quad cortex, I've panned the two guitars at the cabinet section. So you can see here, this is the right guitar right here, and the other signal right here is panned to the left. So I get a stereo spread. They're all going through the same output. Let me engage everything again. Let's check out how much CPU it's using. It's using 48% CPU at this moment right here. I just wanted to show this because this is basically how you would set up the quad cortex if you were in a band and you went direct to front of house with two guitars and a bass player. I know 95% of the users of the quad cortex won't use this, but I just think it's an incredible demonstration of the CPU and the processing power of the quad cortex if you compare it to other modelers. I know for a fact that I can't do this on my FM3, for instance. Okay, it's the day after, and uh, I just remembered that people were asking like, okay, so if you're in a full band, how do you change presets for the full band? And like, who's gonna go up? Is, is everyone gonna go and step on the uh, quad cortex to change the tone and sound and all of that? Well, the thing is that if you have it set up like this, where everyone is going through the same quad cortex, you only actually need one guy to switch to presets, or if you're using MIDI, you can do that as well. So say you're playing rhythm, like the lead guitar player in the center here, he wants to play lead, someone in the band clicks this button, changes the scene, it adds the delay, maybe a little bit of boost. So basically one guy using the different scenes will control all the sounds of the rest of the guys. So if I'm going from like a rhythm part to a clean part, for instance, I would click on one scene and it would change the clean tone uh, on, for both guitar players at the same time, basically. So there you go, back to the video. Now, in general, if we start to talk about uh, modelers out there, available modelers, you, you have the Fractal FM3, you have the Line 6 Helix, you have the Head Rush and Kemper and all that. When we talk about these, and you know, usually they sound really, really, really good. One of the things that I experience when I'm playing live, for instance, if I'm using a modeler like this, uh, is usually when you switch presets. So when you switch presets from one to another, from a clean to a distorted, a distorted sound or a distorted sound to a lead tone, usually there's a slight little glitch happening in between the preset shifting, which can be a little bit awkward. Now on the Fractal FM3, you can overcome this by using scene changes. So you have different scenes happening. When you click to another scene, you can have scene controllers that would you know, add gain, for instance, or uh, remove gain if you go from a rhythm to lead or, or so what. So, I mean, that really helps. On the Fractal FM, they have really solved this, but 
you still can't use more than one amp in one cabinet instance at one spot right there. So you're still very limited that you can't really change the preset if you want something completely different for, for a song or something like that. Say you want to have one amplifier for rhythm and then you have a lead tone using another amplifier or a clean tone, you want to have something completely different. That's not possible without having the glitches or the pauses when switching sounds. And truth be told, while switching presets on this thing, you're also getting a hiccup in between presets. I mean, there's a lot to load when you load in a preset, so that makes complete sense that there's a hiccup. But I found a way to solve all of this. So say I was playing live or doing a clinic using, you know, the quad cortex. Uh, usually when I'm doing clinics, I have a rhythm tone, I have a lead tone and a clean tone and maybe something else. I don't know, maximum four different type of sounds. Now I have this preset and as you can see I have four different signal paths happening right here. All of them has an amplifier and a cabinet section as you can see. And uh, let me see if I have a tone right here. That's the rhythm tone. Then I have a lead tone. See what amplifier that is? That, that's a dual rectifier amplifier. On the rhythm tone, I'm using a Freeman. On the scene three, we have. We have a Fender Tweed, US Deluxe Normal. And then on the fourth scene. I have another rhythm tone, but I also have it pitched down uh, to semitones. I don't know why, I just, it's just to showcase something, I don't know. Anyway, having it set up like this, where I have four single paths with scene changes, the switching between the sound becomes incredibly seamless. Check this out, so I'm on a rhythm right now. Switching to clean. Worth mentioning that all of the amplifiers are different, so you're switching in between four completely different amplifiers in this preset right here. And the spillover as well, if you go from uh, the lead tone to another. Hard to keep rhythm there. I think this is really cool. This is the first time I've been able to get this absolute seamless uh, sound switching, I would say. And the coolest part about it is that I can use completely different cabinets, completely different amplifiers, and it's still seamless switching. Let's check the CPU monitor. It's at 62%. So yes, it is stressing the quad cortex a little bit. Yeah, man. So there you go, just a demonstration of the CPU power of the Quad Cortex. The more I delve into it, the more impressed I become. And I mean, already at this level, this is probably what I'm gonna use the Quad Cortex for. Maybe you won't, but for this alone, it's definitely worth getting, in my opinion. It's just a really powerful unit, and 
I'm also really looking forward to uh, seeing what Neural DSP will add to the quad cortex. I mixed her a little bit with different impulse responses and whatnot. And uh, right now you're loading impulse responses in the cab section, but they are making an impulse response loader, a dedicated impulse response loader. So you don't have to go through the cabinet to reach your impulse right here. So yeah, this is just the beginning, man, for uh, the quad cortex. And uh, I'm getting more and more sold on it, I must say. So there you go. I hope you liked this little second video. I will probably make another video. And maybe I'll try and capture some more stuff and uh, work on the capture feature a little bit. We just have to see. Thank you so much for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you have a great day. Thank you.